Hi there, everyone. My name is Prerak Juthani. I'm a third year internal medicine resident at Stanford. I recently published a video about the most competitive medical specialties. And in the coming few weeks, I will be breaking down each of those specialties, specifically neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, internal medicine, and even dermatology by why they have such low match rates and ultimately the people who are kind of getting the short end of the stick. But before we do that, it's very important for us to understand the different groups of applicants there are. And that's what today's video is about. Today's video is about the MD match rate, the DO match rate, and then the IMG match rate. And the way I'm going to break it down is by defining each of these specific types of groups and also showing you the general trend in number of residency spots and the people who are matching into those spots. It's actually a very insightful um, presentation, particularly because I'm going to go over the history of like the number of spots that have been available, and then I'm going to go into the DOMD discrepancy, and then also talk a little bit about the IMG uh, fiasco, which I know that there's always a little bit of drama there, specifically because IMGs tend to have lower match rates, but we can talk about that. The source for today's video is actually different from many of the other videos. This is because I actually am using the 2024 main residency match data. This is data that came out in June, not the data that came out in August of 2024. This data, because it's much earlier, talks directly after the match happened and the number of people that were matching and not matching. The good part about this data is that it gives us a very large time frame to follow. It goes all the way from 1952 to 2024. And you can see that based on 1952, there were way, there were you can see in yellow this is the total number of residency spots and blue is the number of applicants until 1952 to maybe even around 1972 there were always more spots than applicants this is nice right i have an mba this is just the basics of economics supply and demand if your supply is the number of spots and the demand is the number of applicants if you have more spots than applicants that's good that makes sure that we have everyone essentially matching on the other hand right around 1972 you'll see that there's a trend that started to happen which is the fact that there were way more applicants and way fewer PGY spots. The rate of increase of the PGY spots was not keeping up with the rate of increase of applicants. So until about, I'd say, maybe even 2008 or so, the rate of increase of applicants was way higher than the rate of increase of the seats available. So there's always going to be people who don't match. That's just purely the name of the game. However, if you look recently, 2024, um, the rate of increase, I would say, between the number of positions as well as the number of applicants has actually been about the same. If you take the derivative of the graph here, when you take the derivative of the graph here, I might even argue that the derivative of the graph um, in yellow is higher than the derivative of the graph up here, which implies that the number of positions opening up is slowly increasing far more than the number of applicants is increasing. With that being said, um, you can see that until but since 2004 until 2022, uh, there has been a rise in the number of applicants every single year. In 2024, there were 50,000 applicants, um, representing about a 2,000 person increase from 2023. You'll also see that the number of spots increased. But the reason why this is important is because I basically am showing you why there are always going to be people who don't match. And specifically, there's this discrepancy is going to be much higher in specialties where there are fewer spots, such as the more competitive specialties, including dermatology and neurosurgery. With that being said, I want to talk about the different types of applicant classes. A lot of people don't know the differences, and it's very important to define them because the match rates across these class groups is very different. So I'm going to go one by one. USMD seniors are individuals involved in a USMD school accredited by um, LC, um, LCME. They are seniors in that school right now, which means they are starting residency the next year, which means they did not take any time off. USDO seniors are basically the same thing. They're individuals who are seniors in a DO program, and they have usually been from um, from they have been accredited uh, specifically um, prior to the year of the match. Okay. Then we have USMD grads. These are very different than USMD seniors. USMD grads mean that they have gone to a medical school in the US, but they're not seniors. That means they graduated from an MD school and they took some time off and are now applying for residency. So you'll see that this is very different than the MD senior who's applying while they're in medical school. Same with the USDO grad. Again, went to a DO program, took some time off, and is applying now um, after some time. Then we have USIMGs and non-USIMGs. USIMGs are US citizens enrolled in or graduate of a medical school outside the United States and Canada. Similarly, a non-USIMG is the same thing as above, but someone who is a non-US citizen. Okay. And then there's Canadian students, um, which are going to be a different group because they're technically not IMGs. 
Um, the way I want to break this down now, again, this is just going to show you things you may already know. And if you're an IMG or if you're an MD grad, you're a DO grad or an MD senior or a DO senior, it will show you just historically the way the data has looked for that group. I want to show you first with the MD seniors and DO seniors. Specifically, I want to show you that people say MDs and DOs are not seen the same. And I think that's probably true in specific specialties. But overall, you'll see that the match rates across MD seniors and DO seniors has been incredible. It usually is around 90 to 95%. And specifically, you'll see that the, the discrepancy between the two has slowly gotten smaller. So you'll see this past year in 2024, 92.3% of DO seniors match, whereas 93.5% of MD seniors match. So the overall match rate between those two groups is about the same. However, if you looked at my video that I recently recently published, you'll see that the discrepancy of those match rates is much more stark in competitive fields. The neurosurgery match rate for MD seniors was 60%, whereas the neurosurgery match rate for DO seniors was, I think, 20 to 30%, right? So overall match rate tends to be about the same. So if you're looking to just match, the MD-DO discrepancy often goes away. But if you're looking to match into dis competitive specialties, that discrepancy is much more prevalent. And you'll see, if you look, click on the video above, you'll see that um, that's where those discrepancies are. That's a video I published recently. Now I want to talk about USMD grads and DO grads. And the reason why this is important is you may have a friend who was thinking of taking some time off after medical school and then applying for the match. If that is the case, I heavily recommend against this situation. And the reason I recommend against this is notice that USMD seniors, the match rate is 93%. But if you were to see a USMD grad, and that means you took any time off, that match rate drops from 93% to 45%. You almost half, you do essentially half the match rate. Same with DO DO um, grads. And there's probably a lot of reasons for this, but I think part of it is the fact that if you took any time off after medical school and you didn't start residency right away, it's kind of used, it is viewed, and whether this is right or wrong is beyond me, but it's viewed as somewhat of a red flag because it implies that you clearly were questioning whether or not you wanted to do residency and you took some time off. And so this is just something to consider. If you did take time off, that doesn't mean you won't match. I think there is a chance that you can match. Specifically, matching into more competitive specialties is, of course, going to be much harder, and everyone's situation is different. But I just wanted to point this out. Now, let's talk about IMGs. These are called the foreign trained physicians. This includes both U.S. citizens and non-U.S. citizens. And the match rate for them is actually higher than that of U.S. MD seniors and U.S. DO seniors, but it's still quite low compared to DOs and MDs. You'll see that the match rate for them is around 60%. That means six out of 10 people match. Specifically, the discrepancy is going to be much higher in more competitive specialties, which we already alluded to. This is really important because not everyone understands this. Um, even if you're a U.S. citizen and you go to medical school outside the States, it makes it much harder for you to match in general, but it is still possible. I want to show you that there is also a discrepancy between the fact that if you are a U.S. citizen versus a non-U.S. citizen, there is a difference in the match rate. If you are a U.S. citizen, the match rate is around 67%. If you are a non-US citizen, the match rate is about 59%. And again, part of this is the fact that there's only a handful of programs that will allow you to cater to different visa challenges if you're not US citizen. Similarly, if you're a US citizen, you don't have to worry about that. And so programs may be more willing to take you because that's one less hurdle they have to clear. Um, and then now this is just a summary of everything I told you about, okay? You'll see that the match rate, don't worry about the orange and the green. Um, it's just a different denominator, but let's just focus on the blue. All applicants, among all applicants, this includes USMD students, USMD seniors, um, DO students, DO seniors, and then it includes the IMGs, US and non-US IMGs, as well as Canadian uh, graduates. The match rate is around 80%. That means 8 out of 10 people match. Among USMD seniors, the match rate is 93%, DO seniors 92%, but then you'll see that MD and DO grads, 45 and 47 respectively, and then US IMG and non-US IMGs is 67 and 59. So... Again, you're seeing these things play out. I'm going to go into what specialties are going to be the most hit by this in a future video. But I know this is, of course, like tough to swallow, and it's really helpful to even know these numbers up front just so you know what you're going up against. The last thing I want to talk about is the fact that as you interview, you are more likely to match as you list more places. And you can see that of the MD seniors and the DO seniors, they didn't include other applicants because these are the two biggest groups here, that about most of them, among the MD seniors, you'll see 6.3 were unmatched and 7.3 were unmatched of DO seniors. But around um, 
45% of MD seniors and even 40% of DO seniors match at their first choice. So overall, that's actually really good and actually is a very promising situation. And even people who don't match at their first choice end up loving it, but you'll see that some people match in their second, third, or fourth choice. But all that to say, part of it is just matching. And if you match, that's great. I just want to show you this just to show you that the process is, is obviously needs some changes, but it's not entirely futile. So if you like this video, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.